what I'm going to do next is show some photographs of my own uh, installation. So I bought these um, late November and I think by the time I received everything uh, I was building it about a week later or so, I think five days later. So end of November, beginning of December. Um, there was a little problem where I had to wait for something to arrive from Hong Kong a little bit later, but um, after that, but I'll mention that when I come to that photograph. So this is the kit that I bought. The power supply I'd actually already bought for a project, um, I think it was last year or earlier on, earlier on last year sometime. Uh, so 2021. Um, I didn't use it for very long, so it's effectively new. Um, I have used it for a few hours, but it's effectively new. Uh, but the rest of it I bought um, uh, in November, what was available. So I've got the um, Asus Republic of Gamers Strix 690A gaming Wi-Fi D4 motherboard. Uh, I used to be heavily into gaming. I'm not anymore. Uh, I use my computers for serious stuff more now um, than anything else. I do game occasionally, um, but it's not what I spend most of my, my time doing now. So had I been a you know, thoroughbred gamer, I would have bought uh, one of the better gaming boards. But what I'm concerned about now is performance um, in terms of uh, capability of the processor and the memory, but not out and out. Um, overclocking performance so yes this board does support overclocking performance it's probably a mid-range gaming board um, because the processor is touted as a gaming processor more than anything else uh, I thought I'd go down those lines to get the most performance from a gaming point of view but with the view of uh, performance as well so um, you'll see later on or in a few moments the case I bought was a white case I saw the case and basically built everything around the case so that's why I bought this because it was a, a white motherboard most other motherboards are um, black motherboards um, but obviously I wanted the performance so the performance entails getting a gaming motherboard so that's kind of why I went for this one kind of why I went gone for the white cooler as well to go with the case um, I was going to buy white memory. Um, I did think about buying memory with LEDs in. I did want to get DDR5 memory, but in the end, I couldn't get what I wanted. I wanted fast memory, and I wanted a lot of memory. Um, so in the end, what I wanted in terms of speed and capacity was more important to me than the look. So I ended up getting this Ballistic Max, which is just plain black memory but it is 4400 uh, MTs and um, together combined they're 64 gigabytes of memory I believe I've read that 64 gig is the highest capacity you can get on one stick of DDR4 memory I would like to have had 32 gig sticks um, to allow myself to upgrade in the future to 128 meg uh, sorry gigabyte on the motherboard but I couldn't get that um, now whether it's not available but I, I, so I think I remember reading that 16 gig is max per stick so the max I could get DDR4 was 64 gig in total so what I'll do is if I find in the future that I do need more memory I'll sell these second hand and buy DDR5 um, memory and get the 120 as DDR5 I really would love to have gone for DDR5, but I suppose because it's so new, it's extremely expensive. It was hard to come by what I wanted. Um, it was either a case of if I could find 16 gig DDR5 sticks, they were absolutely expensive. Um, or what was reasonably priced, reasonably priced was only like 4 gig or 8 gig. And I thought, well, I don't really want to end up with just 32 gig on the system. I do want more. Um, so, and the differences between the current speed of DDR5, it's only a little bit faster. Uh, in the future, there's going to be faster DDR5 as there is now. You know, this is 4400 rated um, RAM, uh, obviously overclocked, whereas the motherboard can only do up to 3200. And I imagine 
the original DDR4 motherboards couldn't even do that. They're probably, you know, maybe only 2600 or something. So this is probably as close as I could get to performance that would get anywhere near to DDR5 for now. Uh, as I say, in the future, it'll be another thing. And as you can see, I've got two um, NVMEs, one terabyte Samsung N980 Pros. So they're up to 7 meg read. And you can see the processor itself in the center. Um, I went for the top of the range, i9 12900K. As I say, I want, I wanted maximum performance. I wanted enough memory, enough performance for what I'm doing, which is basically mostly rendering now and compiling. Um, and before I go on, you may be wondering, why didn't I go for an AMD? There's several reasons. Um, I've had AMDs before. Uh, and also the systems I've had with AMDs have had issues with them, various issues. And one I can, one big issue I can remember, one system I had, the um, USB was broken and it was down to the AMD chipset. I think it was 760 it was. Um, so there was only one USB port and the motherboard manufacturer had released two versions of the motherboard. The initial version, because the USB was broken, they packaged in a USB slot which took away one of the uh, it's PCI slots that was on the system. The later revision of the board, the USB was working, but only one of the USB ports was working, even though it worked off the motherboard and there was no extra expansion. So it wasn't ideal. Um, and let's say I've had other problems with AMD. And yeah, the AMD, is it the 5950X, would have been ideal for me. 32 threads, um, outperforming anything that Intel had previously. Uh, ran cool as well. In terms of temperature, um, it would have been ideal. And I must admit, I, I've been looking to upgrade for probably about a year or more now, a year and a half. Um, the AMD did look very tempting, but I, I couldn't bring myself to do it. And then when Intel brought this chip out, um, the reviews were very good. I thought, yeah, this is the one for me. I know what in, Intel are like. Um, been very reliable. And... The one thing I haven't mentioned, which was the killer for me, was the single core or the single thread performance for the um, 12th gen Intel core. And that blew it away from me. Um, when you look at the CPU benchmarks, um, I think it's cpubenchmarks.net or .com, it's got a rating of 4000 plus for a single thread, whereas the fastest AMD can do um, I think it's the 5950. It's something like three and a half thousand, the benchmark. So it's, it's, you know, 20% fast. Is that 20%? Yeah, it's about 20% faster. Um, it just knocks everything out of the water. So basically this, this CPU has got the fastest single core rating on, on the planet for an x86 uh, processor. And that's what did it for me. Even though I'm rendering, and I'm compiling. What I found is that uh, rendering doesn't always use all the cores all the time. Um, and uh, if it does, it doesn't max out the CPU. Uh, certainly not on the older CPU that I've been using, uh, which is a Haswell. It's a 4770K. Um, and rendering again there's only a few of the larger packages which can max out all the threads all the time or most of the time rather most other packages there's one core one thread running um, for example when the configures running uh, when you're compiling it's on one thread uh, a lot of the time there's one thread running that's managing the build and it may be waiting waiting for another thread to to finish um, so you know, if you've not looked at it yourself before, if you're compiling like in Gen 2 or, or Linux from scratch, you'd be surprised how often the CPU is idle on several cores. So that's when I decided that, yeah, single core performance is quite important to me for the type of work I do. And even gaming, and this is probably why the Alder Lake is good for gaming, they might use two or three cores at the most. Um, there are probably exceptions. Um, again, this is probably why the uh, Alder Lake range of CPUs are so good for gaming. They're, they're scoring good results in gaming. 
it's because of the single core performance. So, yeah, if you've only got if you've got a game that's only using four cores, it's using only four cores, but it's using four very fast cores with the Alder Lake. So that's that's my reason for going for an Alder Lake Intel. This is the case that I bought, uh, a Lian Li. As I say, I saw this when I was looking at systems. Um, I saw this as a pre-built system, actually. And, yeah, I just fell in love with it. It's uh, a beautiful-looking case, and it's well laid out. The only thing I've got reservations about is the fact that, um, if I show you a picture of the actual case, you can see it's got a glass panel at the front, so nearly all cases have got venting at the front so you can put fans at the front suck in air and blow it elsewhere out the back top sides whatever um, this is probably why this looks so attractive to me this case because not only has it got the glass side panel but it's got the glass front panel um, and yeah it does look um, quite stunning another thing it's got it's got what they call dual cavity so you've got the main cavity here where the motherboard goes and the fans and so on and all the expansion cards and then this thickness here this width here and roughly that thickness there is another cavity and behind that cavity is where you you route all your wiring so all your wiring's tucked out of the way so the build looks clean there's three um, areas at the back where you can have either two power supply units and one this drive caddy twin twin drive caddy or it does actually come with two caddies so you can have four uh, three inch disk drives and a power supply unit area at the back so again that's all hidden so all that wiring's hidden away you just route it through these little rubber ports uh, they're just little rubber flaps that you can route the wiring through and I'll show you that on the build another reason why I've bought this case it's been ROG certified so uh, you know it works with Asus ROG boards which is you know my, my preference Asus boards um, and I don't know if you saw on the box it says it's been designed um, in conjunction with Debauer who's a well-known uh, gaming enthusiast and you know designs these sort of things uh, so I thought it was ideal for me. I, I used to regularly build PCs every year, every two years. You know, if something new come out, I had to buy, go out and buy it and uh, build a new machine. I have to say, this is the first time I've ever gone out and buy and bought anything that's just been released. I've generally waited maybe like eight months a year to see how the market settles down and see what is good and what is bad. But um, I'm so blown away by what I read about the Intel. And as I say, I've been waiting a year anyway, looking at the AMD um, that I just sort of took the plunge and bought this stuff, uh, so it's a bit of a risk. Um, but yeah, I don't upgrade very often. Last time I upgraded was 2013, so it's like eight nine years ago. Um, I'm quite out of touch with the latest kit, so I wanted to make sure that I was buying stuff that would fit together, that would be compatible, and so on. So um, yeah, a bit of a bit of a coward when buying stuff, I guess. Um, but that's purely because I'm not really up with the latest stuff. Um, even when I've got the motherboard up and running, some of the overclocking features on the on the motherboard uh, don't make any sense to me. Yeah, I've got an Asus Z87 Pro, I think it is, with my Haswell. That's got overclocking, but I've never used it. I've never even looked at it. I've just had it on bog standard settings. But now I need something that's uh, you know with performance. I probably will be looking at um, tuning. The, the system to to get that every last ounce out of it although I have to say that um, reliability is the number one thing for me um, if I overclock it and the system becomes unreliable or I overclock it and the only reliability I can get is 1% improvement I probably won't bother I'll just use the standard settings but I'm expecting to get something good out of this from what I've read so there is the motherboard you can see um, with the uh, socket exposed with the pins it's um, you probably know LGA 1700 1700 pins there um, we'll be talking a little bit about that uh, this motherboard's got LEDs behind this panel which cycle and I believe there's software to control that 
yeah, I must mention that all the RGB stuff, it's all software controllable, as you might expect. You probably already know that anyway if you're into this sort of stuff. Um, my original intention was not to install Windows on this because I don't have any need for Windows for what I intend the machine to be used for. However, um, some of the RGB stuff's quite, shall I say, annoying to have it flicking in your eyes all the time. Um, so I'm, I may be installing Windows um, to see if I can tune that, to see if it's retained at power off. Um, if it isn't, then I'll have to um, do something about that. Um, either to turn it off or uh, not not leave it plugged in. Uh, the fans in particular are quite bright. Um, so I don't know if that the settings are something that programmed every time the Windows or the machine boots, you know, as Windows boots, or if it's something that's retained at power off, I don't know yet. So uh, that's something I'm contemplating looking at. I haven't installed Windows on it yet, but um, it's something I will be probably doing to control the lighting so if I move on so this is the gold thing you saw in the um, box at the beginning it's just a fancy case basically for a plastic case which you can see is an image of a wafer with all the dyes on as, as they would be in the factory and inside you can see there's the foam and this plastic case which holds the CPU itself and there's the CPU in place and there's a picture of the uh, protective lid on top of the CPU and one of the um, kits that I've bought uh, you can see it's this stuff is normally 1.2 volts but it's capable of running at 1.4 volts uh, when it's overclocked to the 4400 speed and in the next picture you can see there's all four sticks populated so I'd love to have had the white ones to go with the rest of the motherboard but the, the black don't look too bad at all um, here's one of the uh, NVMe slots exposed with the uh, heatsink compound still got the plastic protective plastic on it and then there's the box, one of the boxes with one of the um, NVMe slot uh, cards and there's one of them and well sorry if I go back there's one in the box you don't actually see it in place I've put the heatsink back on that one and this is the next heatsink exposed um, this one as I remember didn't have heatsink compound uh, yeah compound the foam on the bottom and I suspect this one had the compound and the heatsink so much bigger because it's proximity to the CPU. So I imagine there's going to be quite a bit more heat um, spread away from the CPU into this NVMe. So I think that's why this heatsink's so big and why there's heatsink compound top and bottom. Like I said, I don't remember there being anything underneath this one, just on top. So, but it's a lot smaller uh, heatsink. And this one here, this big heatsink here, this takes two more NVMe slots. And I think this NVMe is the one that's connected directly to the CPU, whereas these three are the ones that are connected to the Z90 chipset. There's a picture of the um, cooler in its box. And this is the bracket that mounts behind the CPU on the back of the motherboard and what you might notice that's different if you've bought one of these is these red washers that I've put in place um, because the uh, the Capellex that I bought H100 I think it is uh, doesn't support the LGA 1700 out of the box it only supports 1200 um, there was a problem with fitments and what it needs for the LGA 1700 to adapt it is some different standoffs and they didn't come with the box because I presume this is just old stock what, what I had to do was to order new standoffs from Corsair directly um, cost I think £3 with free postage I think it was which is a bit of a swizz for four little screws basically but yeah okay there you go I think I should have gotten for free probably spent you know 
fair bit of money. Um, but there you are. What also irked me was the time it took for them to be delivered. It took about, I can't remember exactly, it's between seven and ten days I had to wait for them. Um, and they were delivered from Hong Kong. Um, they didn't come directly to the UK. They get delivered to Corsair's um, headquarters for Europe, which is in Holland. So, yeah, they got delivered to Holland, but they spent a couple of nights in Holland and then <clears throat> a couple of days coming over from Holland. So, yeah, it took, as I say, seven or ten days in, in the end. It wasn't particularly fast. So, in the meantime, what I thought might work was if I put these washers here, and this bracket would pull the uh, cooler block, the cooler block of the pump, in towards the CPU more, so to make better contact, because the problem is that the height of the CPU and the socket for an LGA 1700 are just slightly lower than an LGA 1200. The difference is about 0.75 millimeters, that's all it is. Now there is an overlap in the specs. If you look at the specs for an LGA 1200 and an LGA 1700, the range that that height can be, there is an overlap. So I could have just put this on, and from what I've read on the internet, people have, have just put this bracket on, and they, they've said that it's worked fine. I, th yeah, I wasn't really happy with that, so I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll put some washers on here, I'll reduce the distance of the um, threads, if you like, the threads that the um, mounting screws will go in, and that will pull the block closer to the CPU and make better contact. But I was worried about fouling the motherboard, both from behind and both from the top. So what I did, I used these are washers. These are the fiber washers that you get the motherboard, the little red fiber washers for mounting. Um, you know when you screw a standoff to the chassis and then you screw the standoffs into the chassis these are the washers that go onto the screw when you're screwing the screw down onto the standoffs so that the screw doesn't foul the motherboard so I put these behind to reduce that difference these are roughly about half a millimeter so I thought well that's roughly what I need to bring the um, pump block to the processor this this should work so here's the motherboard in the case now the red you can see there is the background of the table it's not actually those washers but what you can see from here is the Asus boards come with two different um, mounting points the, the LG 1200 is the inner one and I can't remember what the outer one is but it's a different form factor so with that mounting plate you could use either of these you could use the outer or the inner and it would work so it's quite compatible but for the LGA 1700 so if for example the mounting kit didn't have this inner setting um, well it'd be stuff really but the Asus for some reason does come with both settings I imagine it makes it more compatible but the LGA 1700 does use the inner ones and here is a close-up shot of the LGA 1200 standoff that comes with the Corsair pump and you can see that red there if I zoom in that is the actual fiber you can see that that's not the tabletop underneath that is the actual fiber washer that I've put around there and you can also see the edge of the um, socket where the thread is going of the standoff it's just about flush with the motherboard and that was another thing I was concerned about. If I screwed these standoffs, would I start ripping up the motherboard and it's a multi-layer motherboard, could I be compressing the layers or even shredding a trace that's just close to the um, hole here? Unlikely because normally there is a keep out zone around these holes but it's something I was quite concerned about. I didn't want to go mashing up the uh, motherboard. So what I did, I screwed up the standoff very loosely and then unscrewed it and then looked at the motherboard closely to see if I could see any scratch marks around it. You can see just very faintly here there's a slightly different colour around the hole 
and you can probably just see it just about here. See, there's a dimple there, and you can see some sort of texturing here. Whereas here in this zone here, there's no texturing, and I imagine this is the zone that you could put a screw head um, that would be allowed to come into contact with the motherboard, which would uh, wouldn't matter if it did foul the motherboard slightly. Whereas if you're in this zone here, um, it would matter. So yeah, I, I screwed the standoff down uh, just loosely, just a little bit of friction, undid it, looked, see if there's any uh, scratches or marks. Uh, there wasn't, so I screwed it a little bit tighter, and each time I just just checked it to see if there's any fouling, and there wasn't. So that made me think, ah, right, okay. So it means that these collars, these threaded collars, or collets, whatever they are, um, that means they're obviously a fixed height, so having the washers behind isn't really going to make any difference because it means that the um, the, the collars are fixed height. It's just going to bring the pump into the back plate, the back mounting bracket, at a fixed distance. And the distance is the height of these these collars. So I kind of thought, well, the, the washers aren't really going to do, be doing anything much anyway. But I left them in there anyway. I screwed down all of the standoffs and just went with that until I got the proper LGA 1700 standoffs. Um, one other thing I will zoom in and show you here, you can just about make it out. The top of the CPU bracket, the um, cover that you bring down, that you clip in, I don't know if you can see that, it just says LGA-17 and that's XX forward slash LGA dash 18 XX. So this indicates that this particular socket, the, the uh, mechanics of the socket will be used for an LGA 1800 or 18 XX socket. So it does indicate that the next generation of um, Intel core may be using 1800 pins. So it may be in incompatible again with the 12th generation it could be the next generation 17xx as well, or 1701 or something. Um, and it could be, you know, a couple of generations time that the 1800 pin is used. But you can see that this socket is uh, capable of taking, um, or, the, or the mechanics of this uh, uh, socket is capable of taking more pins um, without changing its dimensions. So there's, there's room for more pins. Um, and there's another photograph where that's um, that information is visible as well which I'll show you in a little while so there's the internals of the case with the fans mounted you can see the um, just about to see the uh, mounting plate there with these thumb screws because of the lack of space I had to use a screwdriver to screw these down um, but as I say because of those uh, sleeves the threaded sleeves that the standoff screw into um, they're of fixed height. I wasn't particularly worried about over tightening. Um, the only worry was just over tightening and stripping the thread. So it was tight and tight enough, um, but you know, without going silly. Um, yeah, I initially put these here because I thought oh, I'll use this chamber that's behind the motherboard to uh, suck all the air out. Um, but I decided not to in the end purely because of the fact I realise when the disc caddies go back in, when the power supply is there, when the cabling is there, I thought, oh, it's going to be quite uh, restricted. So I didn't actually leave it there uh, in the end. Um, and there's just another shot, but this time you can see things are wired up now. So there's the CPU power, the ATX connectors here. There's a USB connector there. Uh, there's a USB 2 connector for the fans. The, um, I think that's the sound, that one there. I think that's front panel, USB, and so on. <clears throat> and you can also see that I moved the orientation of the pump. Oh, no, I didn't. I thought, oh, yes, originally I had the pump going here, but I thought, well, the, mem the memory could get warm with the heat in the pipes. So I thought I had a photograph of that. I haven't. So this is the second position of the pump that I finally laid on. So here's a picture of the standoffs. The front one is the LGA 
1200 so if you remember the LGA 2100 in the previous photo had a groove in the middle the LGA 1700 standoff hasn't got a groove you can see it's ever so slightly shorter and um, believe it or not that is about 0.75 millimeters so it's it looks quite big there but it's you know, barely noticeable when you look at them with the naked eye this is obviously a picture that's been um, you know a, a close-up picture just to get to see that and here's an image of the back plate so this is the, the back bracket without the red washers this is with the LGA 1700 standoffs um, and you can see the cut out there I imagine the LGA 1800 would be, would be using this area here for extra pins um, I imagine um, yeah one other thing to show here is you can see it better here what you can see on the top of the mounting the socket mount you see LGA upside down LGA 1700XX or 17XX slash LGA dash 18XX so this mounting bracket and the socket kit is I imagine going to be used in the future it will be it will remain the same dimensions Um, also, you can see from that picture, the bracket and the motherboard had two um, holes for different sockets, and it's the inner ones that you use for the LGA 1700 mounting. Um, and if you remember about the shape of the die, it's oblong rather than square. All previous CPUs have been... Um, square in shape, the die has been square, the the heat sink, um, uh, I can't remember what it's called now, the metal bit on top of the CPU, the heat sink part um, has been square and this one's rectangular. Now I actually think that's caused the problem um, with how efficient these coolers are uh, are and how efficient they can be used how efficiently they can be used with LJ 1700 sockets and I'll show you um, why I think and from what I've seen because if you remember when I had the washers on I had to dismantle this all to fit the new standoffs and because of that I had to dismantle the pump and that meant new heatsink compound and it's the image that I saw of the heat sink compound I wasn't happy with um, and there has actually been some research done by somebody on the internet about how effective these uh, older uh, heating or cooling solutions are with the LG A1700 sockets um, and I'll mention that after I've gone through these pictures um, well, in fact this is the last picture so this is just a picture of the case up and running um, with the you can see I've moved the pump to the top of the case so I, so I didn't like it there it's, I thought this would be better if the pump was um, you know moving the air directly to the outside of the case rather than through another void um, don't worry about this card here this was just a temporary fix up to get the network running until I got a driver installed um, in fact uh, um, uh, I run Gen 2 and Debian for the work that I do and Debian is Debian 10 and there's no support or very little support for the newer kit in this motherboard and CPU so I've actually had to use a network USB which is a which is what I've done so that that little network cards not there anymore uh, but yeah you can see it's compiling uh, some stuff on Gen 2 there 